Welcome to Pedals and Stuff. I'm Sam and today we're going to talk a bit about power supplies. I kind of laugh because I know what you're thinking. That's not as sexy as talking about a new delay pedal or, or the latest overdrive pedal and so on. And as guitarists we love those things. But at the heart of our pedal board is going to be a power supply and we need to make sure it can do the job. So the main things we need to think about really are voltage, the draw, the current it needs and the kind of polarity of the adapter. Um, so let's take those in order. So first of all, voltage. We need to make sure that we're putting the right voltage into our pedals or we could just completely fry them. Normally on the pedal, it will tell you what they need. So for example, this one says nine volts DC. So we need to make sure that that's receiving nine volts DC and I don't plug like a 20 volt one in there, which like I said, can just destroy the thing. Uh, really, really important, unless you want to go out and buy yourself the same pedal again and again, which we don't want to do. The next important thing, like I said, is polarity. So we're talking about the adapter really. So most of these nowadays are center negative. Uh, it kind of came from the boss style adapter really, which is cool because it means that, you know, our pedal supplies will fit tons of pedals. So that's really, really useful for us. But you do need to check because some, particularly some older ones, you send the positive and you don't want to mix them up again. It could really hurt your pedal. The third thing we need to think about is current or, you know, the draw, the consumption that the pedal needs. So most overdrive pedals or analog pedals need very little, maybe as little as four milliamps. But the digital devices that we're using more and more today, particularly kind of the multi effects units and so on, often need a lot more than that, up to 400 or even more milliamps. So we need to make sure that the power supply we're using can supply enough for all of those pedals to work properly. So let's take a little look at my board and I'm going to go through a couple of things that you might want to think about. OK, so this is my pedal board. It's a work in progress, so it's a bit messy and I've kind of taken things out and moved things around a bit to demonstrate some of this stuff to you. So bear with the mess and the wires. So first of all, if we have a look at these pedals, we'll see that there's a real range of draw needed, of current draw. So we've got stuff like Frida Tone here, the delay pedal and the golden reverb pedal here, and they both need about 400 milliamps. We've got things like the Dane over here, obviously a drive pedal that takes or needs about uh, 34 milliamps. Uh, underneath, I've got things like the Micropog and the Micropog takes 180 milliamps. Uh, the Soloist, I couldn't find information on it, but I'm going to assume it's similar to other tube screamers, so probably around seven milliamps. Uh, the Kali 76 compressor, that one takes around 77 milliamps. And other common ones, for example, like an op-amp uh, Big Muff Pi takes around five. Uh, Boss OD and an SD1 take around four milliamps. So, you know, in general, kind of drive pedals um, take less uh, and analog pe pedals take less than digital devices like the uh, delay and reverb I've got up here. So I'll give you an example of why it's really important to understand the power draw needed. If they can't draw enough power, then they're not going to work properly. So for example, at the moment I've got my Line 6 wireless, my Relay G10S here plugged in. But you'll see that it's got this red light up. Um, it's not charging, so it, when it's charging, these lights will be coming on there. And that's because I've purposely, for this demonstration, attached it to a power supply that can't quite give it as much as it needs. Uh, and it was fine for the first 10 minutes, and then it just died on me. And that's what you can expect, for example, if you're not giving it enough power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch some wires around now so I can make sure it has got enough current going to it. 
and we'll see that that rectifies the power problem to an extent straight away. So let's just check that out. All right, I've now switched the line six over to a power supply that is giving it enough uh, current. And you can see now it's charging and it's looking happy. However, if you listen, you might just hear that buzzing. There we go. Um, that wasn't there before. And if I turn on uh, a drive pedal, let's go with this one. You can hear all that noise. So again, this, this is a slightly different aspect of power. So now it's got enough current and that's fine. It's, it's drawing what it needs and it's working, but it's pretty noisy, right? So the other issue is isolated power. And this is again, a great example of that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that power supply off and put it into an isolated power supply and we'll see the difference that makes. All right, so now it's in uh, an isolated power supply. So what I've got here is the Time Lord from the gig rig, which is an isolated power supply, which is gonna give us enough power coming from its distributor here. Um, and what we're gonna to notice straight away is hopefully, have a little listen, that little buzz is gone. So totally silent now, no buzz at all. And if I turn on my pedal, much, much quieter. Now bear in mind, this pedal I'm turning on is actually this one here, which is a uh, fuzz, it's a meathead clone, and it is really full on. Um, really, really loud, really noisy. So to be that quiet with a pedal like that is quite amazing. <laughs> and that was a soloist. <laughs> I love that thing with the fog. All right, now, having gone through those things, don't think I'm trying to sell you gig rig stuff. I'm not. They are really good, but I'm not trying to sell you that stuff. I just want you to understand the power supply and the needs that your board will have. So for example, I've still got this one spot here with a daisy chain on it. It's a bit messy, <laughs> but I still use that. It's a great thing. Uh, we just need to make sure that when we're using them, we're using them appropriately. So I'll use this on a small little uh, board. Maybe if I've got like a, a couple of overdrive pedals and my wah pedal this will do the job for that, it's not a problem. But you don't wanna use this when you're looking at introducing big digital effects. And the other thing is, we're not then providing each one with the isolation that it's gonna need, as demonstrated in the video. Isolation is really important to getting the best sound out of your pedals. So feel free, yeah, absolutely, do use these. It's cheap and it works, it's effective, but just make sure you're using it correctly and appropriately, right? The other thing that we can use, particularly again with a load of our drive pedals, is just put a battery in there. Put a battery in there and you've got your best form of isolation that you can have, haven't you? Every single pedal is powered separately. It's isolated from the rest. So that's a great solution as well. Uh, yeah, might wanna check out, for example, the King Tone Power Packs. They're really, really cool. So they're a little uh, strip where you can put your batteries in and then they come out to your pedals. So yeah, you don't need to go out and buy the latest, biggest power supply there is. Just check what you need, buy the appropriate power supply, or use batteries and so on. Find the way forward for you. Just make sure you don't fry your pedals and you're getting the best sound out of them that you possibly can. 
So yeah, take care and see you soon. Make sure to check out the other videos and like and subscribe. That'd be absolutely awesome. The support is always appreciated. Uh, take care, see you soon.